So we learned about unidirectional many-to-many -many relationship in last few lectures. Now in this lecture, let's learn about bidirectional many-to-many -many relationship and how to implement it using type ORM. So if I go to VS Code, here we have a tweet entity and we have a hashtag entity. Now we have a unidirectional many-to-many -many relation from tweet entity to hashtag entity. And here the tweet entity is the owning entity. The relationship is from tweet entity to hashtag entity. So here the tweet entity knows about the hashtag entity. But in the hashtag entity, we are not specifying anything which will let hashtag entity know about the tweet entity. Here you see, in here we have two properties, ID and name, but we do not have anything which specifies that this hashtag entity is related to this tweet entity. So here we have a unidirectional many-to-many -many relationship. We have a relation from tweet entity to hashtag entity. Now what we want is, we also want to have a relation from hashtag entity to tweet entity. So that hashtag entity also knows about the tweet entity. And doing that is very simple. And again, the relation between hashtag entity and tweet entity will be many to many relation. One hashtag can be associated with many tweets and one tweet can have many hashtags. So here between these two entities, we have many to many relationship. Currently, we have a unidirectional many to many relationship from tweet to hashtag. But now we also want to have a relation from hashtag to tweet. So for that, what we are going to do is in here, we are going to create another property. Let's call it tweets and it is going to be an array of tweet. And to use this tweet entity inside this hashtag entity, we need to import it. And here this tweets is going to be an array of tweet. And now to specify that this hashtag entity has a many to many relationship with the tweet entity, we are going to use many to many decorator. And to use this many to many decorator, we also need to import it from type ORM. And to this many to many decorator, we need to pass the first argument, which is a callback function, which should return the entity with which we are defining the relationship here. In this case, it will be tweet. Okay, and since now we want to have a relationship in both the directions, here we also need to pass a second callback function, a second argument, which is going to receive a tweet object in this case. And here we are going to say that this relation is on the hashtag property of the tweet entity. Okay, so this tweet, it is an object of type tweet. And here we are specifying that this tweets it is basically having a relation with the tweet entity on the hashtags property. I hope you got the point. Let's save the changes here. And now let's go to the tweet entity. And here also we need to specify the relation explicitly now. So here we have a many to many relation from tweet entity to hashtag entity. So let's pass a second callback function here. Here it is going to receive a hashtag an object of type hashtag entity and here we are saying that this tweet entity has a relation on the tweets property of the hashtag entity and this completes the bi-directional many-to-many relation between the tweet and the hashtags but remember that in this relation the owning side of the relation is still the tweet entity because in this tweet entity we are using this join table decorator so the owning side of the many to many relationship in this bi-directional relationship is still the tweet entity let's save the changes here all right so i hope now you understand how you can implement a bi-directional many to many relationship between two entities now let's say what we want to do is let's say whenever a hashtag is deleted the related tweet should still be there in the tweet table. But the relationship between the tweet and the deleted hashtag should be removed from the junction table. Let's understand what I mean by that. So if I go to PG admin, there we have this junction table called tweet hashtag hashtag. And we also have this hashtag table where currently we have two hashtags, nest.js and JavaScript. 
and we also have this tweet table where we have three tweets so what i want is let's say whenever a hashtag is deleted let's say this javascript hashtag is deleted so this javascript hashtag it is related to this tweet for if i go to the junction table the tweet hashtag table there you will see for tweet four we have two related hashtags the hashtag with id one and hashtag with id two so when this hashtag with id two is deleted we want to keep this tweet in the tweet table this tweet should not be deleted this tweet is related to this javascript hashtag but we don't want to delete this tweet when the javascript hashtag is deleted what we want is we want to delete the relation which we have between the tweet and that particular hashtag from this junction table so for tweet 4 we have a related hashtag with id 2 so once the hashtag with id 2 is deleted from the hashtag table we want to delete this relation let's see how we can achieve that let's go back to vs code and let's go to hashtag service and there we are going to create a new method so here let's create a public method and let's call it delete hashtag okay let me make this h in uppercase to delete the hashtag we are going to get the id of the hashtag which is going to be of type number and here what we are going to do is we are going to use the hashtag repository and on that we have a method called delete okay and to this delete method we need to pass the id of the entity in this case the id of the hashtag which we want to delete from the hashtag table so here we will pass an object like this and there we will specify that we want to delete a hashtag using its id and which hashtag do we want to delete we want to delete that hashtag whose id is equal to the value stored in this id property okay and in es6 as i have mentioned before when we have a variable with the same name as the property to which we are assigning it we don't need to do the explicit assignment if we do it like this then also we don't have any issues but if we don't assign it explicitly then also it will work so here what i will do is i'll keep this explicit assignment okay and since this delete method is going to run asynchronously let's use this await keyword in front of it and once that hashtag is deleted what we want to do okay so to use this await keyword we also need to make this method as a sync all right and once that hashtag is deleted we simply want to return something in the response in this case we will return an object where we will have the deleted property we'll set it to true and then we are also going to return the id of the hashtag which has been deleted so to this we are going to assign this id and again here the variable which we are assigning to this id property it has the same name so we don't need to do explicit assignment here we can simply omit it like this okay with this let's see if the changes so our delete hashtag method is available now now let's go to hashtag controller and there let's create a method let's call it delete hashtag you can name it anything i'm just simply going to call it as delete hashtag let's decorate it with delete decorator so this method should be called whenever a delete request is sent okay and with this delete request we are also going to receive the id of the hashtag which we want to delete with the route parameter so i'm also going to specify a route parameter here this is not an optional route parameter and i'll simply call it as id now we are going to read the value of this id route parameter using at param decorator okay let's specify id here and when this value will be read it will be read as a string value but the id should be a numeric value so here i am going to convert it to int using parse int pipe and to use this parse int pipe we need to import it from nestjs slash common okay let's simply call it as id which is going to be of type number and finally what we are going to do is we are going to use the 
hashtag service and from there we are going to call delete hashtag method and there we are going to pass this id as the value for the id parameter of delete hashtag method and this delete hashtag method once it has deleted the hashtag it is going to return us an object we want to return that object in the response and this is it let's save the changes here now what we will try to do is we will try to delete the hashtag with id2 here so here if i go to tweet table we have this tweet with id4 and if you go to the tweet hashtag junction table you will see that for tweet id4 we have two related hashtags hashtag with id1 and hashtag with id2 so when this hashtag with id2 that means when this javascript hashtag is deleted the tweet should still be there in the tweet table but this relation which we have between the tweet id4 and the hashtag id2 this should be deleted from the junction table so let's go to postman and here i'm going to make a delete request let me copy the url from here and here the endpoint should be root url slash hashtag okay and which hashtag do we want to delete we want to delete the hashtag with id2 now if i go ahead and if i make this delete request we should get an error and you'll see that here we have this internal server error now this internal server error here is because we are not handling any exceptions properly in our service class in this method or any of the method in that matter we have not talked about exception handling and error handling yet but the problem here is it's not something related to the server it's not something related to our nestjs application but the error has occurred on the database level so here if you see if i go to pg admin you will see that this value 2 it is a foreign key from hashtag table and when we are trying to delete this hashtag with id2 this id is being referenced in this junction table and because of this the postgres sql is not deleting this record because it is being referenced in another table okay since the hashtag table is not the owning side of the relation when we are trying to delete a record from the hashtag and this record is being referenced from this junction table that's why we are getting the error this is because of the foreign key constraint so in this case we will have to manually specify that we want to cascade the delete operation to join table whenever a delete is performed on the hashtag table so let's go back to our hashtag entity and there let's pass a third argument the configuration argument and there we can set on delete to cascade okay let's save the changes now let's go back to postman and now let's try to make this delete request again and this time you will see that the deleted is true and the id of the hashtag which has been deleted is two let's go back to pg admin and let's verify that so first let me go to hashtag table there you will see that previously we had a hashtag with id2 now if i rerun this query you will see that that hashtag has been deleted if i go to the junction table between tweet and hashtag earlier we had two related hashtags for this tweet id4 but now if i refresh since we have deleted this hashtag with id2 this relationship should also be deleted from this table if i rerun the query you will see that that relation is deleted but if i go to the tweet table the tweet with id4 should still be there in the table if i rerun this query you will see that the tweet with the id4 is still there so here when we deleted a hashtag from the hashtag table the relation between that hashtag and any tweet will be deleted from this tweet hashtag table i hope you got the point 
So this is all I wanted to cover in this lecture. If you have any questions from this lecture, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.